Hi, everyone. Welcome to tonight's webinar. Tonight, we're going to be talking about possible questions and concerns you might have when buying a business. As always, our webinar is being recorded tonight. Uh, you'll be able to access it on the website within a couple of days. Um, as always, um, if you have any topics that you would like to have covered on these webinars, please make sure to send Patrick an email or a message uh, via the website to let us know what you're interested in hearing about. Um, after all, we are here for you. We want to make sure that we get your success, make sure that we, we guarantee your success. Um, again, um, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me and see the screen. So for those of you that are on the webinar and you can see the screen and can hear me talking, please raise your hand so that I know that you can actually see and hear what's being presented. Okay. All right. Great. So let's go ahead and move on. So here's some reasons that people actually sell their businesses. We're at a time right now. I mean, one of the reasons that Mike put this program together is that we're at a time when there's a lot of business owners that are looking to exit their businesses. And for whatever reason, they might not have a succession plan, or if they had a succession plan, maybe the person that they saw is taking over the business no longer has interest or is not prepared. Um, also, uh, you know, one of the reasons that, here's some of the reasons that people sell their businesses. Is it's not bringing in enough money for them. Um, personal reasons, you know, if there's a divorce, a death, a retirement or some health issues, they might just be tired. They might just be somebody who has been in it for a long time and, and hasn't come up with innovative ways to remain competitive. So that could be another thing. They might see bad times are coming. Um, they could also be somebody that's doing this on purpose. They might be a business fix and flipper, just like you guys are. Um, or the other thing is, is that maybe, um, you know, somebody inherited a business and they don't want to run it. And then another thing, and this happens often, is, is they just don't have the skills needed to thrive in the current business environment. In fact, I'm hearing that if manufacturers don't start to become open-minded and, and innovative, um, they're going to lose a competitive advantage. So things are changing in the business environment. And if people aren't constantly adjusting to that business environment, I mean, that might be the potential of why they're um, losing business. So I talk about this often on the calls. Um, you know, one of the things is, is that when you are involved in this program, you need to have a plan for yourself. You need to think about, first of all, what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve? Now, I know that most of you are looking for a business to buy and might want to run it or might want to find people to plan. And what, how much time are you willing to invest in it? You also need to think about, in terms of the businesses that are out there, what is it that you're looking for? You know, what type of industry do you prefer? Is there, do you have experience in a particular industry? Is there a particular industry that are, you're passionate about? You need to think about what, what industry would be something that would pique your interest and get you excited, right? You want to think about that. You also want to think about the business type. What type of business is preferred within the industry? And then what is the size of the business in relation to investment capability? Obviously, you know, there's there's some there's wide ranges of prices for businesses. There's a, a wide variety of different size of business. What is it that you're willing to handle? What is it that you're able to deal with? What is it that you're willing to invest in? Time, money, uh, what, what resources? What, what is it that you're willing to, to look at in terms of the size of a business? What can you manage? Relocation, you know, are, are you willing to relocate if necessary? Are you looking at businesses that are outside of your geographical area? What does that mean if you acquire that business and if you're going to be working on it? Do you have to go there day to day? Are you going to be there quarterly? Are you going to get other people to actually run it? And, and if you are going to have other people run it, who's on your team? Who do you have available that, will, that you trust that's going to actually work on that business? Geography, what are your geographical preferences? You know, is it something that you want in the United States? Is it other countries? Um, is there a certain region that you want to work in? So you need to think about that as well. And risk capital, what is your acceptable risk level in terms of dollars to invest? You know, what are you willing to do? How much are you willing to put into something? 
how much are you willing to to actually work on something so you so you need to think about this and you need to make that part of your plan so what is your search plan you know are you going to be somebody that's hands on on the business or are you going to be somebody that's going to be an absentee business owner how involved are you going to be in that business what resources are you going to require do you need an advisory board what do you need? So you need to have a plan here to decide. And maybe you don't know. Maybe you should have a plan A and a plan B. If if you if you find a business that you really like that's not in an area that you can be at physically, then what's your plan? You know, you need to come up and, and understand because this is going to impact how you look for businesses that are for sale. Um, timing. How soon do you want or need to purchase? You know, if you're in a hurry and looking at this to actually – and sustain yourself find business owners who are ready and willing to sell you know people who are going to be moving things in the pro through the process quickly people who have a, a dire urgency to actually close the deal um, you want to also have a resource inventory you know all of you and I know some of you are new to owning your own business but all of you should start developing a list of people that you can access both as sources you know, sources for referrals, sources for um, being able to connect you to people that can help you. You also want to put together a list of the types of people that are going to help you in every deal. And then depending upon um, the type of business you buy, is there any specific talent that you require or skill set? So you want to make sure that you start getting to know people that you can then access when you're ready to actually um, close on a business. Um, use an intermediary. We call these centers of influence, right? So um, that can include accountants, banks, um, network contacts that you've met, industry specialists, and even business brokers. I mean, business brokers, um, depending upon um, who they are, I mean, there's some really great business brokers who are genuinely interested in adding value, not only to the people selling the business, but also to you, someone that's buying the business. Um, I started putting this up every webinar because I think it's important for us to look at this and be made aware of what is the criteria for deals. Now, this, this is what Mike is looking for. This is, this is the minimum requirements for Mike to potentially be interested in partnering on a particular deal. So this does not mean, like if you found a business that, that doesn't meet this criteria, it doesn't mean you shouldn't go for it. If you're feeling good about it and you've done your due diligence and it's something that excites you, we're certainly not discouraging you from turning those types of businesses away, but these are the things that Mike looks for. And if you want Mike to potentially work with you on a particular deal, this is what he's going to be looking for minimally. So um, he does not want to work on any startups. Um, he basically is looking for businesses that are established and have been in operation for two or three years or more. Um, he also wants to uh, work on businesses that have a gross revenue of a million dollars or more. He likes to have businesses that are in one of the following industries. So manufacturing, distribution, retail. When I say retail, not brick and mortar, so not a storefront, but basically online retail. Um, technology is another thing that he likes to work on. And, and service is always good because you've got higher margins in the service industry. Um, professional services especially. If you're going to be looking at businesses outside of the United States, you can look for businesses outside of the United States, but one of the th criteria there is that English must be the language used in the business, okay? Um, so I'm sure you would find there would be businesses in Europe and also Canada that, uh, you know, English is the primary language. So businesses can be online or offline. Um, he does not like to work on restaurants or franchises. He also is very selective when it comes to assisted living. Assisted living facilities are on a case-by-case -case basis, so no guarantees there. There have to be it has to be like the perfect storm of characteristics for him to actually work on that. And then he's looking for qualities that he considers optimal quality. So they're a sales or marketing-driven business. They possess some exclusivity or uniqueness, so they have a niche. Um, the product or service has a high gross margin. Um, the product or service has a built-in demand. And the product or service cannot compete solely on price. So the cheapest isn't always, you know, the best. So you want to make sure that you're going to be able to make money, that you're going to have, uh, uh, you're going to have a, 
something that has demand, something that people are going, you're going to have some repeat customers. So these are the criteria for if Mike is going to actually work on a deal. So, but I think this is good for you guys to use as a guideline as well. Since most of you are new at this, um, this is a great guideline for you to go by when you're actually going out there and looking for businesses. Okay. Um, I've been putting up this free business valuation tool on every webinar. My recommendation is, is that when you are out there looking at businesses and listings and you see a price for a particular business, this is a great tool for you to get an idea to see if the business owner is being realistic about the business. This has been a tool that some of the people that are in the program here have actually used and have been able to take their findings from the numbers from this tool and they can use it as part of their negotiations. So this gives you an idea if, you know, a lot of times those um, business postings have some financials, it has quite a bit of information. You can plug in the information into this free business valuation tool and it'll give you a sense of the, um, if the value of the company is in the ballpark. And I can tell you that this is one area where I don't know if it's intentional, I don't think most people are intentional about this, but people look at their businesses as a retirement vehicle. A lot of times people are thinking, well, they spent all this time on their business and then this is gonna be their retirement and they're hoping to get the most money for it. So they're not actually putting a value on it that's necessarily a, an accurate value. They're, they're literally pulling numbers out of the sky many times because they're not looking at it as what it's truly worth because there's many considerations to take. One of them is, can the business run without that owner? Is there a succession plan? Can a succession plan be implemented? There's all kinds of things that are considered when valuing a business. So this is a nice guideline for you to use, uh, a tool for you to get an idea if that price is even in the ballpark. If it's something something like outlandish and, and not even realistic, then you'll have to make a decision. Does it even make sense to go down the path? Because if, if you've got a business owner that's being unrealistic about the value of the business, how easy are they going to be to work with? And are they going to actually be open to having discussions about something that is realistic? So that is something that you should consider when you're actually looking at um, businesses and then trying to figure out, is it worth pursuing as part of your due diligence process? So you're going to want to do the research. It's really important for you to do the research, not only for um, uh, like your uh, bench or the people that you need as resources, but also for, um, you know, you want to be able to do research to learn about that business, that industry. Who are the competitors? Who's, who, has, who is in the market? Um, are there changes? Are there things that are affecting what's going on in that industry? I mean, right now we've, we're in a situation where we've got, you know, trade tariffs, and I'm hearing that there's some manufacturers that are having issues with aluminum, steel, and everything else. So those are some things to take into consideration. So make sure you do your homework, your research, and you really understand what it is that this business, the state of the business, and also what you plan to do with the business. So here's questions that you can ask when you're looking to buy a business. These are the who questions. So who owns it? And sometimes it's not obvious who owns it. Sometimes, you know, like I, I keep telling the story about the situation where I was looking at a business, a tool and die company, they owned their facility, they owned the land that the building was on, and we thought we were talking to all the owners, and it turned out that the land and the building was in a family trust, so there was family members that actually were part of the decision-making process when it came to the building and the land. So you want to make sure you understand who owns that business, who are the players, who, and there's been some of you that I've talked to where you're talking to people that are not the owners. You need to talk to the owners. Um, and if, if they aren't wanting to have the conversation, you need to find someone who has decision-making authority on behalf of that owner. So you want to get a really good idea of who the owners are, who are the players, who are the people that you need to be talking to. The other thing that you need to be very aware of is key employees and managers. Um, I can't tell you how many businesses fail because they didn't understand this and they couldn't retain the people. Um, if there are people that are, uh, uh, you know, of significant value to the business, you might want to take a look at that. You know, they have insurance out there called key man insurance that 
is an incentive to keep people on. So you need to understand who, the makeup of the company, who are the leaders, who are the good leaders, who are the bad leaders. You might want to get rid of the bad leaders and uh, really get a good understanding of what that org chart looks like. You also want to have a good understanding of who the business advisors are um, for that particular business. Who are all the outside resources that they use? Do they have an advisory board? Do they have a board of directors? Do they have people, um, coaches? Do they have consultants? Um, do they work with a lawyer on a regular basis? What about the CPA? You want to find out who all those different advisors are. You also want to have a good understanding of their major clients. Who are they? Do they what, are, what contracts do you have in place? What are the agreements? Um, how often do they buy? What do they buy? You want to, want to really get a good idea of who the major clients are. You also want to find out who your competitors are. Who are they today? And who could they be in the future? I mean, you got to really stay on top of that and understand so that you can be competitive. You also want to get a good sense of who holds any liens against the business, equipment, and or the inventory. And then who's in charge of research and development? It, depending upon the type of company, this could be critical. So who is it that's in charge of research and development? Um, who's going to perform the appraisal of equipment or of real estate or of any other cash asset other than, than that of what's being purchased? So you want to make sure that you have a neutral party that's going to be fair, um, that isn't going to be siding with one with one, the seller or the buyer. So you want to make sure that you have somebody neutral that you both agree upon that, that is going to go ahead and get this information for you. Um, who is the typical consumer of the business product or service? I can't tell you how important it is to know your customers. I got to tell you that when I talk to people, and I talk to a lot of people about who they work with, who they target, they struggle to tell me who's the target market, and they also struggle to tell me who's a right fit. Well, I ask people, who wouldn't you work with? People struggle with that question all the time. What are the problems that you solve um, for that particular customer? That's really important for you to understand. It's all about the customer. It's all about them. Knowing exactly what what it is that, that bothers them or, or they consider frustrating them and, and then relating it to how you... So it is so critical to understand that. So really understand what the customer, the voice of the customer, right? You want to understand from their perspective, how do they view this business? How do they, how loyal are they? How do they see that particular product or service actually helping them solve a problem? Who prepared the financial statements? And you, you want to make sure that, you know, you get to know who it is, who is the CPA, you want, you actually would prefer audited uh, books because it's like, as I've said, Not necessarily be accurate so you definitely want to make sure especially as you get closer to the actual sale of the business that that you do have audited financials so that so that uh, you have verified numbers that somebody's going to stand behind um, who prepared the tax forms you know who who's the person that's actually doing it did they do them correctly are they compliant are they current have they paid their taxes um, who prepared the financial forecast sometimes um, you might have a CPA doing the tax returns, but there might be a, um, you know, a CFO, um, you know, a chief financial officer that's actually preparing the financial forecast and is coming up with the strategy for the business. And they might be the one that's interpreting the numbers, the financials on a regular basis. So you need to know all that information. Here's some what questions. You know, what is the business? What is its products and our services? Make sure you have a good understanding about that. Make sure you understand how you, you know, once you understand the problems, you know, then, then how are you going to solve those problems with the products or services that you have? What's the business's credit rating? You know, just like each individual has their credit rating, um, you know, corporations have a, a, a rating in Dun & Bradstreet. So see what you can find out about that business. See what kind of a rating it has on Dun & Bradstreet. So, you know, want to double check that as well. Are there any liens or lawsuits or any judgments that the business has against it or, or that are pending? That would be something that could really mess you up when you're trying to acquire that business and actually grow it. What type of entity is the business? You know, is it a C corporation? Is it an S corporation? You know, that could make a difference in terms of taxes, um, your growth strategy. Um, if you're looking to buy a sole proprietorship, I mean, first of all, there's some, some liabilities there. There's some, uh, there's, 
some some weaknesses there's some tax issues when it's a sole proprietorship so what is going to be the entity of that business after you purchase it how what what is going to be the best for you and your strategy in actually growing that businesses what secured promises have been made to employees suppliers and creditors that's really important for you to know i mean you got to find out what's been negotiated and, and what are people expecting um what method of account the business utilize cash versus accrual the numbers can be very different so you need to have a good understanding of that as well what contract to go is it a union shop are there any labor negotiations any employee client prospect negotiate what, what does it say about the suppliers the leases the purchase the sale what, what's currently in process what type of employee benefits are in place is it an ESOP ESOP means that it's an employee owned uh, business. There's tax implications there. There's also certain rules, and, and not all ESOPs are the same. So just if it, just because they're an ESOP doesn't mean you should just oh it's an ESOP. You need to understand what kind of an ESOP, and then what is the uh, agreement about that ESOP. What are the things that you need to know about it to, to remain compliant? What type of insurance policies are carried by the business? You know, there's a lot of talk now about um, you know cybersecurity data breaches. In fact, the big I've been having a lot of conversations about. There's new laws in Europe that um, talks about how you handle data that people input into your systems. So there's new laws now in Europe that actually can impact businesses here in terms of how they handle data. So that there's guidelines that need to be followed. Um, that are different in Europe than they are in the United States. So you want to make sure that you're covered. And there are new insurance policies coming out to protect yourself against that. So you need to think about that as well. What sectors of the industry does your business serve? What channels can you market to? You know, what is it? What, the, the narrower you can define that, the better. What type of computer hardware or software is used? You need to understand the infrastructure of what's supporting the business processes and the business model of that particular company that you're, you're looking to acquire. So that's really important as well, too. So you want to make sure that you have a clear understanding about that. What does the owner plan to do with the sale pro sales proceeds? Is he going to reinvest in something else? Is he going to buy something? Is he going to buy another company? What states can the business operate in or even what countries? You want to have a really good idea of the different territories and stuff. What's the reputation of the owner? Is he somebody that is uh, respected, someone that's trusted? Um, what is the business's economic health? Is, is, is it declining? Um, is, is that one of the reasons maybe they were hugely successful, but now revenue is slowly dropping on a consistent basis? Why is that? What is the future outlook for the product and our service that the business markets? And what method is used to value inventory, LIFO or FIFO? So it's last in, first out, or first in, first out. So you need to think about that as well. You also want to know how often inventory turns. How long does inventory sit on the shelves? How often does it actually turn? That's really important to know as well. Any questions so far? You also want to understand for the equipment, what type of, uh, for the equipment, for, for the real estate, um, what type of depreciation method is used? Is it straight line or, or is it some other accelerated method? Do, do book and tax use different depreciation methods? So it's like, is the bookkeeper, is the tax account? I mean, what, you want to make sure that those are consistent. What are the company's fixed and variable expenses? That You definitely want to have knowledge about that. What type of equity does the company have? Is it common or preferred stock? Are there bonds or convertible debentures? Um, what are the benefits and features of the product or service that the business now offers? And technology is util utilized by the business that is in need of updating, replacing, or scrapping. I can tell you there's a lot of companies that are limping along on old, outdated, antiquated systems. And, and to be competitive, I mean, you got to be current on tools that are going to really support you so that you can, um, you know, fulfill uh, your products and services to your clients as soon as possible. I mean, everything's about immediate gratification, right? So what are the five and 10 year business plan objectives? I find that most companies don't have this. So you want to see, are there any business plans and have they been updated and have they been implemented? And in terms of what they had planned, how far off are they? What type of financing is available to the business? You know, are there any bank loans? Um, are they conventional? Are they SBA? I mean, are they alternative financing? What are the terms? What part of the product or process can be sub subcontracted? Sometimes it's cheaper 
to have uh, parts of the business outsourced versus doing everything internally. So you want to look at that as well. What current or emerging markets should be should they be prepared to serve? So they might be missing something on some kind of future target. I mean, you can do you can take a look and see. Okay, this is today's customers, but where else could we service? Are they missing an opportunity? Is there a new channel that we could actually market to and target? What research and development has been done with respect to the product or service? Are they kind of just going along with something that was uh, uh, innovated uh, 20 years ago? Or is it something that they're continually working with? I know in a lot of tool and die businesses, um, most of the work is custom and very specialized. And um, you always have to stay very up to date with, um, you know, with precision and measurements and all of that. So, that. so that's something that you need to look at as well. What capital costs will be required to stay competitive in the next three, five to 10 years? What are you going to have to invest in this to make it go? and to sustain yourself and to actually grow it to a point where you're going to get value where you can actually make your return on your investment. And then what contingent liabilities does the company have? That's another thing that's very important for you to know. Here's some where, you know, where is the business physically located? You know, where, where, what country, is it in a good spot? In some cases, location, 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 is it, is it in a good location to do what you need to do with that business? Where are all the pertinent papers and files located? Are they electronic? Are they in file cabinets somewhere? Are they sorted in a way that they're easily found? Um, where is the business domiciled? What state? What country? Where does the business do its banking? Can the owner seek venture capital? If so, where? These are all really important where questions. Here's some when questions. When is the earliest time the business will be available for sale? You also want to find out what loan, when, when our loan applications do, because that might be something that impacts your decision. When is the fiscal year end? Some companies are 12 you know, at the end of the year, or some of them are in June. Um, when is the fisc, or, uh, when was the last time the business <coughs> or benefit plans were audited by the government? What was the result or action taken? That's important for you to know. When was the last time the business's insurance coverages were reviewed? I can tell you that people that I talk to that are in the risk management business say that most businesses have huge gaps in terms of their um, insurance coverage. That they, you know, if you don't look at this on a regular basis, if if you're growing, if you're doing <coughs> new types of business, this has to be reviewed on a regular basis. When was the last time billing procedures were reviewed? That's an opportunity there because sometimes like billing could be a place where you might actually be able to increase um, cash flow. You know, a lot of times people are, uh, they, they, for if they've been doing something the same way, you know, and, and they're billing net 30 or net 60 or net 90, maybe you could find a way to um, actually make that um, quicker or uh, payment due immediately. Maybe you pr provide some discounts on that. When was the last time leasing arrangements were reviewed? That's something that needs to be looked at on a regular basis because you don't know if there's opportunities to renegotiate and actually, you know, get some better deals. When was the last time client contracts were reviewed? Sometimes it's like, you know, customers fall off because they don't hear from you or they don't hear from the company. There's another opportunity to, to make sure that, you know, if, if customers have been sitting dormant, maybe it's because nobody's reached out to them. So that's something that's really important as well. When was the last time benefit packages were reviewed? There's a lot of changes going on in terms of benefits, and there's different ways that you could actually um, uh, lower the cost of insurance. There's all these new wellness strategies and everything else. So when was the last time that was looked at? When was the last time all business contracts were reviewed? That's really important, too. There might be some things out there that are completely outdated. There might be better opportunities out there, but they were missed because nobody's looking at them. So here's some really important why questions. Why is the present owner, owner selling the business? And again, if you've got a timeline where you want to buy a business quickly, you want to find a motivated seller. So, um, you know, I always use the uh, extreme example. I mean, if you ask somebody why they're selling their business and they say they have three months to live, I mean, that's somebody that's very motivated and is going to move. So um, if you've got somebody that's dipping their toe in the water to kind of see what kinds of offers they can get, that's not a serious seller. So really get a sense of why they're selling the business. What is their plan? Um, you know, why did they get into business in the first place? Um, if it did go public, why? Um, why did the company remain private if it's if it's not public? 
Um, so you want to get a really good understanding of what the thought process was of what was going on in the mind of that business owner. You also want to find out if they did have tried to sell the business in the past, why didn't it sell or why didn't it close? That's another thing that's really important for you to understand. So here are how questions. How much does the owner want for the business? Are they willing to do any of the financing? You need to find out how important are the key employees to the business. I mean, if you've got somebody that if they leave, the whole thing dies, I mean, that's really important for you to know. Um, you also want to understand how important it is to satisfy major clients, suppliers, creditors, etc. I mean, you got to find out about those relationships so that you can be in a proactive mode to make sure things stay the same or get better. Um, how are the voting rights for the stock determined? How long since the owner took a vacation and how long? This actually is a sign. If there's an owner that never goes on vacation, that, that is just spending all their time on the business, why is that? Why is it? What, what, what's, what's lacking? What's missing? Are there things that are not in place that prevent that owner from going on vacation? Is it something that he feels can't run on its own? I mean, one of the things that you really want to do, especially if you're going to improve that business and sell it, is that business should be able to run without the owner being there. It should, should be able to just click along and do its thing. What's the culture and morale at that business? How do employees feel about it? Are they proud to be working there? Is it something that's a drudgery? Um, how are they with customers? You know, what's the culture like? You want to find out if, if it's healthy or if it's something that needs to be um, rectified. Um, how marketable is the product or service offered? There's some things here that is it something that's going to be sticking around or is it something that's slowly fading out? Uh, so you want to see and make sure that you have an idea of what the marketplace is like and what the potential is for the future. Um, how long is the turnaround on accounts receivable? Again, you want to make sure that people are paying you as quickly as possible because that's going to help you with your cash flow. You want to have a good idea of um, you know when that money comes in so that you can actually figure out cash flow and figure out how to manage the growth of your company and the operation of your company. Um, how much bad debt does the business ex experience? And this is in terms of uh, how many customers don't pay, how many are uh, you know in collection. So so you want to have a good idea about that as well. How close have business projections run to experience? This is something that um, companies need to measure. I don't know that they always do, and I don't always know that they have projections. Or are they realistic projections? So this is something that if they do have business plans, see what they say and project it and see how close they were to actually meeting um, those particular um, goals. Um, you also want to get a good sense of the taxes, the federal, the state, the local, and or the property taxes. You want to really have a good sense about that. And then how much funding will be required to keep the business open for the next year, three years? This is your investment, right? You need to figure out, this is for you to understand how you're going to structure this deal. So how much profit has the business earned this year, last year, the past three? I mean, you need to know that you need to really have this information because if there are blips in this, if there's places where there's been a decrease, why? You need to have a really good understanding why. And what are you going to do to prevent that moving forward? Um, how much did the existing owner take out of the business profits and compensation? Um, you know, there's a lot of people that take a draw. In fact, one of the examples where the business valuation tool came in really handy turned out that the, I had a, somebody that was in the program that was talking to a business owner, and there was no place where it showed where he was getting the money um, out of the business. So once they put that into the valuation tool, that significantly changed what the value of that business was and then helped in the negotiations. So how would the present owner change the business if he had the financing and time to commit to the business? It'd be interesting to hear from their perspective what they would do if, the, if, if, if things were in a different situation. And then how important are taxes to you? You want to make sure that I think most of us are of the mindset the, the least amount of taxes, the better. So how soon do you want to sell the business? That's something else that you need to think about. And then how, how did you get started? Right, that's something that you want to think about as well. So when you're out there um, looking into a business, you want to do your homework. You want to check with the Better Business Bureau to see how are there any negative, um, you know, reports about this business. Um, you want to check with the court clerk to see if there's any litigation pending against this particular business. You also want to check the references. 
You want to check with the Chamber of Commerce. Have they been involved? Have they been a member? Um, how are they viewed? You want to also check on zoning and licensing and making sure that everything is current and compliant. So I know I kind of ran through this quickly. This is kind of like your little checklist of questions to think about uh, before you're buying a business. Um, I, you know, All our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So I wish you all the best of luck. Um, if you have any ideas in terms of future webinars, please feel free to send us those. And I'm going to say good night. Thank you, everyone.